ultrasonics, deep level mapping, vibrational excavation. No longer the ideas of the future. Instead, the ideas of today. Using frequencies at the extreme end of the spectrum, we here at the Harpington Institute have pioneered a breakthrough in sonic engineering by creating sound waves that can literally break apart molecular bonds to mine our planet with clinical precision and minimal energy cost. I, Dr. Leo Cripps, am spearheading a global research team that has utilised this new model. What's so funny? Global research team. Pull the other one. Why not? I thought Briscoe would be honoured to have Barnsley regarded as global. Ever considered local research team, boss? Listen to our parochial sound. We're not testing river samples for some backwater polytechnic. I am reimagining the entire mining industry. And what's with that music? That's from the lads at Convoy. Can't you put on something classier? Yeah, all the promotional films use Convoy. It's my point. It's production line music. No character, no class. I don't want something that says 1979. I want something timeless. Holst, Strauss, Orff. And what about all these shots of Marvy? What about them? You've got more shots of Marvy in there than me. Oh, I thought this was supposed to be a minor re-edit. All this research means nothing if we can't get buyers to the table. And what happened to that wide shot of Jill? What's wrong with a close-up? Can't see her legs. Oh, might as well replace us all with pans, people, then. How about putting your sales cap on and thinking about how we sell this to all those grim-faced mining contractors? Concept, experience, approach, execution, and yes, legs. You know, boss, Jill may be under the ridiculous delusion that you hired her for a brain. <coughs> Oi! Don't just run back inside! I can't lift this on my own. Bloody hell, I thought it was Jill. Jill doesn't need carrying. This heavy bastard does. Cliff! Cliff, Briscoe's here. It only takes two of us to carry, boss. Don't look at me. I did my back right in at squash. That's convenient timing. Cliff! Cliff! What? The emitter's here. <sighs> Not so close to the ground. You'll scratch it. Can't get a grip. Lift your legs, boys. Lift your legs. Stand back straight at all times. Christ, this thing weighs a ton. Oh, stop dragging it. You're crunching my back up like that. Just lift it up. Take a look at this. Justin Briscoe engaged in manual labour. Wonders will never cease. <laughs> Give us a hand, Marv. Leo's done his back in on the imaginary squash court again. Oh, far from imaginary. <laughs> I beat him 3 1. Be serious. Give it up, Marvy. One flute triumph had a countless miserable fails. Well, if that's how you choose to see it, Leo. Defective vacuum cleaners are now losing at squash. Losing your Midas touch, are you, boss? Let's take up the slack. Come on! Lift! Uh, wait, let me get a grip again. Oh. Uh, there, to your left. Oh. Uh. Oh, thank God for that. You all right there? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about you, boys, but I'm ready for a game of squash. I'm going upstairs. Unlike you party kids, I've got work to do. You let me know if Joe shows up. I'm starting to worry now. Come. Everything all right, boss? <laughs> Rare for you to be so caring. Well, just wondering about Jill. Nothing. You'd think a geologist would be able to read a map. But as with everything, Jill is always the exception. I'm sure no news is good news. There's a final stack of gear arriving in the morning, and then we are set to take on the world. Third time lucky, eh? Is that supposed to be funny? All right. Keep your head on. Let me be clear about something, Briscoe. We are not discussing vacuum cleaners on these premises. Can't you take a joke? Not if there's no punchline. Onwards is the motto here. New slate. Ah, here she is, good girl. Mm. The dramatic late arrival. Typical. We're going to go down and help her. No need. Look who's here. Right on cue. How are you? Look at him. What an embarrassment. He's only giving her a friendly hug. Yes, of course, Briscoe, of course. How many suitcases is that? Nobody regrets going out there now. Oh, coming in for a second hug now. Thank God I'm not Jill. Can't control himself. Got a skirt on a walrus and he chasing. No dignity. You can't blame Mar for playing the field. Playing the field? He can't even play a flower border. Yeah, but he's allowed to. A free agent. Unlike, um... Well, you know... Terry, we're going to be cooped up here for quite some time. Let's you and I not peek too soon, eh? 
Oh, my God. This place is huge. And Jenna's renting it for us. One minute Leo and Jenna are going at each other like Rottweilers. Next, Jenna's stumping up for everything he asked for. Anyway, welcome to Taskerlands. And everyone's staying. Briscoe and Clef have the bunk bed, Leo the full poster. You and I have more standard lodgings. Did you... Did you get my letter? Thank you, Marvie, yes. I'm sorry well, I did you know, it was... You must have been absolutely... I don't want to talk about it, if that's OK. No, sorry. <laughs> I just wanted you to know that I'm always... Oi, oi! <laughs> Strippergram's arrived. Evening, Travel. I hmm. thought Briscoe was reading you your bedtime story. Your turn tonight, Marv. You all right? Not bad. Leo's already trying to get us into the Guinness Book of Records for circuit bending. At least that means he's now given up on the vacuum cleaning record. <laughs> Jill! Terry, come here, you! What's with the map? <laughs> you look like you joined the French Resistance. This is turning into a right old midnight party. Shall we get you upstairs? <laughs> you don't hang about, do you? So, where's Leo, then? Leo just tucked him in for the night. Conserving energy for tomorrow. I warn you, Jill, he's in full battle mode. He'll be putting us all through our paces. And that's what he's good at. Well, don't worry. If he gets out of hand, I've found a nice cellar we can lock him in. Haunted, too, apparently. Bollocks. That's what they say about every old mansion. I have to say, this place does have something wafting through it. I heard some rumours down the local about odd things in the night. But that's what they said about the last place where we lodged. Absolutely fine, yeah. Lick of paint, a bit of air freshener, Bob's your uncle. Just a bit barren, that's all. It's been abandoned for decades. Held up with spit and wishful thinking. I've spent weeks making it habitable for you slobs. Leo? Leo? You all right there? <laughs> a little lost. It is a bit of a labyrinth. Bear to the right, first left, and that's the Fox Club suite, my lady. I passed it, but there's a radio on, so I thought it was someone else's room. A radio? No. Let's have a look. Hello. Cleaner must have left it on. If it was, they didn't do a good job of cleaning. Yes, a bit grotty. Let me open a window. <laughs> Sticks of mould. Oh, that's better. I can brew you a cuppa. I'm fine. I'll get some sleep. Yes, good idea, right. Why did you come back, Jill? You're a terrific geologist. Geophysicist. Sorry, geophysicist. You could work anywhere. Why come back to us? Or to him? It's dry out there, Marv. I find that hard to believe. Wave check, 110 oscillator. Check. Signal generator, 1001A. Check. Type 535A frequency meter. Check. Type 758A wave meter. Check. Ring modulator. Coming out my arse. 1398 A tone vibrator. That's for Leo. <laughs> Check. Hello, <laughs> Bloody cattle auction. There's more gear than NASA here, boss. If you're going to drill through rocks with sound, you need more than a flute and a xylophone. You see, I wasn't lying when I said this project would dwarf all that's come before. Oi, I was eating those. Morning, more you're not. I've had it with your greasy fingers all over the gear. Good morning. Jill, sorry I didn't see you last night. I was out for the count. That's quite all right. Marvie kept me company. Oh, you must have had a corker of a night, then. Look, step outside for a moment, would you? What's with that tone? There's no tone. Look, Jill, please. Look, let's not start off on the wrong foot. Wrong foot? Jill. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for everything. You're not going to say anything? Look, if you want to we talk... We don't need to... You, Jill, please don't push me away. I never know whether it is space you need or support. I think you knew very well what I needed. Well, I have to keep a low profile, and you know that. Amanda finds out and I am dead. Covert grief. If only I had such a skill. Don't the flowers count for anything? They would, if you hadn't written your condolences on a congratulations oh, slip. come on. They all look the same, those slips. I was in a rush that day. What can I say? Well... It's a thought that counts. I came back here so that the last time we saw each other didn't end up being how we last saw each other. We can part better than that. 
I'm here to move on. I'm glad you're feeling stronger. You're glad you're off the hook. 60 steel panels lining the wall. We need to limit any structural damage to the house. And here is the piece de resistance, the emitter. The H21 directional sonic emitter. Thank you, Professor Cleft. It looks like a giant, I don't know. A giant space tuber. Ain't as clumsy as it looks. There's a directional spike hidden inside that horn aperture. This beauty can deliver a field of infrasound powerful enough to burst eardrums, induce vomiting and damage organs. I didn't know we were entering a sonic warfare programme. Use anything unwisely and it'll cause damage, harness its power correctly and great results await. Where have I heard that one before? Oh, I love disbelievers. They make the big payday so much more of a gloat. Jill, take that piece of rock, put it on the dais. Briscoe, cleft, position the emitter over the rock. Right. She's in position. OK, then, Briscoe, give me a standard bass pulse. Adjusting the emitter a fraction, boss. There, she's on target. It's horrible. Raise the sound count to 85. 100 decibels and drop the 20 hertz. Can't hear you. Raise the sound count to 85. 100 decibels, 20 hertz. Almost there, boys. I can feel that in my backside. Me too. Save that talk for the bunk bed. Oh, God. Leo. It's cracking. I can see it. It's cracking. We're cracking. Everyone all right? Jill? Jill? Yes, fine. Sort of like all the bad bits of being drunk, isn't it? On the shandy you gulped down, maybe. Tell us, Jill, what did you see? Well, it hardly needs explaining. As you can see, igneous rock split in two. The emitter fires infrasound directly into the stone, drilling with sound, essentially. There's a problem. We have to be able to shoot this thing like a laser beam without turning the miners insane. Or into jelly. That's the mission. Don't get me wrong, boss, but we're a domestic appliance team. Industrial sonic drills, it's out of our league. We pioneered the green cap. Yeah, but it was a lid. We basically put a lid on a lawnmower. Uh, we won an award. Some award in Würzburg, of all places. Still an award! They forgot to put Doctor on the statuette. He had him redo it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's going on out there in the big wide world? Those spoilt brats over there at Bell have just cracked an advanced mobile phone system. Even that sideshow Sinclair is out in Cambridge with another gadget to get us all quaking in our boots. Now, science is the new gold rush. It is all going on and we are on the brink of something here. <sighs> You're scared, aren't you? Once bitten and all that. Why do I bother? No, not if you had your way. Well, yes. Look, oh, look, I'm getting fed up with this. Yes, I have got a ton of stuff to do here. I... Hang on, H hang on a second. What is it? Bangers and mash, your highness. In a minute. Uh, it's just one of the assistants. Listen, yeah, look, I have to go. Everyone is starting dinner. Oh, stop it. Am Amanda, stop it. Yes. <laughs> Start without him. Oh, is he blowing kisses to the missus again? More like trading punches. It's like a bloodbath of those two. I'll be on the phone for ages. It's only in the evenings when she's had one too many G&Ts. It's all giggles and purrs when they speak in the morning. Oh, I think I prefer to overhear the arguing. Hmm. You ever met her, Briscoe? Once, at Christmas bash. What's she like? Nice jugs. Mm. Don't like the way she dances, though. Waves her arms around too much. What's that? <laughs> uh, just talking about your missus. What about her? She's a really good dancer. No, just... Uh... <laughs> How many you had? 
Don't you start. You're the one who's knocking them back. This is premium single malt. You don't get drunk on the good stuff. Especially if you remember to refill the ice cubes. Isn't me, boss? Well, I had them refilled this morning. Twelve cubes and none left. Don't start. Watch your heads. Watch your heads. Yeah, thanks for saying it now. What did that sign say above the door, Clift? Yeah. You're not seriously going to store stuff down here, are you? We're in the heart of the original medieval foundations. Spooky down here. Oh, 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 ah, ah. Ah! oh grow up, you two. <laughs> it's dry down here. That's odd, isn't it? A cellar sunk into the ground like this under a big old abandoned house, and these walls are bone dry. Freezing cold. I thought the builders were going to do it up a bit. Not anymore, it seems. Jenna says they got cold feet. Cold feet? Don't give me that. I met that lot. Bunch of local lads. Thoroughly underwhelming. They wouldn't even take cash in hand. They took bone iron. They care about anything like that. Bit of graffiti here. Look. Properly etched in. Until I am no longer in that room. Ooh. Cryptic. Oh, forget that. I'm sorry, but I just I just don't understand those stairs. They don't reach the far wall. They just stop. They hang. It's probably a botched attempt at a pulpit. When you lot are finished discussing home improvements, might I kindly suggest that we carry on with the tests? Thermal conductivity, 419 watts. Magnetic opening, diamagnetic. Young's modulus, 80 GPA. Shear modulus, 27 GPA. Bulk modulus, 99 GPA. Poisson ratio, 0.4.1 Oi, shift your backside. You said you'd be ready ten minutes ago. I'm ready. No, you're not. You haven't even got your stinking donkey jacket on. Right there, John. Just about to turn in. Long day. Off out somewhere? Just off for a swift half. Don't tell him off. No need. He's fallen asleep in front of the telly again. <laughs> Hello? Is someone... Mm. <gasps> oh, God, Leo! Sorry. So I just came in to see how you were. Who let themselves into my room? This door was locked. Who's got the key? Nobody. Just you. The radio was on. Well, you probably left it on and forgot. No, I didn't. You don't take it personally. I'm not taking it personally. And I heard a noise, a grunt. Haven't you forgotten who's sleeping next door? He's asleep in front of the telly downstairs. You'll get some rest, OK? You're... Uh... And what? <laughs> Emotional? Hysterical? Oh. <laughs> Which one this time? Yes. <laughs> Come on. I'm just like your bloody wife. You always try to write me off. That's not true. Remember, it's my loss as much as yours. But do I get any condolences? No. Well, you don't exactly show any signs... Any sign of what? Hmm? Grief? That old chestnut again? I'm a professional, Jill. Show must go on and all that. Exactly my point. You're a professional. And a little sprog in your life oh. is just a distraction. Why don't you just come out with it and admit you're relieved? Well, just because I don't cry, just because I don't think that every creak in the floorboards is Rumpelstiltskin trying to get me. Oh, sorry for not ticking the grief boxes, Jill. Next time you break a smile, I'll remind you to be miserable again, shall I? You don't need to! Nothing could have been done to save it. It? To the point, this. 
can only be from his nibs, then. He wants to know how soon he can expect results. Cheeky bastard. You can't rush a scientific breakthrough. You know, Leo, if you gave Jenna something... Oh, like what? A little humility. You don't want him closing us down before we've even turned on an analyzer. Very wise, Marvie, very wise. But you're forgetting the fact that Jenna needs me more than I need him. Thanks for clearing that confusion up. Ignore that message. Don't send a reply. I'll give his nibs something when I've got something to give, and he will be sobbingly grateful. Angle it in, Clef. What you try angling it in? Come on, what's wrong with you? All right, all right, not too high. Drop it to 25 hertz. Yeah, that's the problem. It's not letting me. Let me have a look at it. <sighs> it's upside down, you wally. We'll get these shells up in no time. No, you can't be serious about working down here. It's freezing. The things we do for him. The things we do for him, indeed. None of them you have to do, you know that. He's put you through enough. Let's not... Jill, I want to help. It's too soon to be back at work after what happened. Don't fuss, please. Let me be the judge of that. What is it that you see in him? Marvy. I'm sorry, but some of us care. That's all I'm trying to say. Thank you. Let me fetch Clefton Briscoe. We need some extra hands to put all this up. Shall I get you a jumper? Uh, no, thanks. I'm fine. OK, back in a tick. Is that you, Marvie? Who? What the hell was that? She's in the cellar. Jill! Jill! Don't touch me! What happened? What happened, Jill? Are you hurt? I don't know. It just c came out of nowhere. Why did you scream? That wasn't me. I don't understand. That wasn't me! Milk, no sugar, yep. Marvy already made me one. Oh, quick off the mark for his age. Not now! Where did it come from? From the walls. It came from within the walls. Are you sure it wasn't outside? It was late. Teenagers mucking about. Drunk on that rubbish local cider. Or foxes, even. I saw one the other night rubbing itself up and down an obelisk. There were footsteps. Heels. And then this scream. You all heard it! Oh, we heard it all right. Can't you feel it? It's in the very walls. The builders must have felt it, too. No stuff the builders! Anyone think they're prophets the way you lot bang on about them? Even the sight of dry rot would make them lick it. We all heard something, boss. There's no denying it. Come. Leo. Shouldn't you be tucked up in bed advice with your teddy by now? Advice. If you can take it. Don't stay up half the night boozing. Why did you have to tell her about the builders, eh? A bunch of village idiots and now it's put ideas in our noggin. So you don't believe her? Oh, come on. This is Jill we're talking about. What's that supposed to mean? You know what she's like. Drop of a hat, she catches a dose of the vapours. She's suffering. Well, that's her raison bloody detra. Ever since I've known her. If it wasn't this, it'd be something else that would send her around the bend. That's Jill. Sensitive is the word. <laughs> that's rich coming from the man who had the Vanguard Journal reprinted when they described him as balding. Mm. Oh, and how would they describe you then, old Marv? I pay money to read that. Yeah, put a sock in it, Leo, will you? There is something going on in this house that we can't ignore. She's like this all the time. Too cold in winter, too hot in summer, always something wrong. She likes people on eggshells around her. And she can rely on you to generously scatter those. What if she... if you saw... A spirit? Look, this is her way of taking control from me. Oh, you're a psychologist too now, are you? You really are a piece of work, Leo. She's vulnerable, deeply hurt and grieving. It took courage to come here, but no. You have to twist it. Make it all about you and how she's trying to manipulate you. Keep it up, Marv. Why are you smiling? You're never going to get your leg over, Marvy. Hmm? You know that, don't you? You're drunk again. Hmm. Is that your way of dealing with the truth? She's not interested, and it's about time you registered that sorry fact. Beating me to the kettle to console her won't make the blindest bit of difference, neither will pretending you like Super Tramp. So if I were you, I'd put your willy back in your chinos and save it for the Reader's Wives section of your favourite magazine. You bastard.
See? I told you. Patience. Did my back in bring that thing down here? Shh, shh, shh. I'd give it a more disruptive frequency. An angle it towards the wall, perhaps. You sure that's where the scream came from? I'm sure. OK, everyone, back behind the emitter. Cam's on. Left, on the tape again. Tape running. Speed set at seven and a half. Briscoe, give me a pulse. Level. How is sound going to summon it? It's called trial and error, old boy. Set to 90 decibels. Hundred decibels. Hundred decibels, Terry. Enough! It's a waste of time and energy. We're squandering a valuable piece of equipment. That, that screen was probably a one-off. Wait, Clef, are you still recording? Yeah. Then leave everything running. What? Listen. Jesus! What's that? Oh, no. Oh, my God. Did you get that? Oh, I've got it. Yeah, well, don't just stand there. Play it back. Scream was probably a one-off. Wait, Clef, are you still recording? Yeah. Then leave everything running. What? Listen. Jesus! What's that? Oh, no. Oh, my God. Did you get... Nothing. Nothing at all. But we all heard it, yes? Yes? Absolutely, we heard it. I don't get it. There has to be something on that tape. We heard it. Maybe those builders weren't as soft in their head as you thought. You see now? She's trapped in there. All right, let's not get melodramatic. Melodramatic? We just heard... We experienced a scientific anomaly, a potentially lucrative one at that. I'll call his nibs. Tell him we're under something huge. And that'll keep him off our backs. Jill, take a sample of stone from these walls. Briscoe, Clef, you run that tape through everything we've got. There has to be something on there. This milk tastes like vomit. <sighs> I've had it with this dump. What do you think that scream was? How should I know? Could have been a murder, could have been a fall, or probably whoever it was just saw a big spider. We'll never know. Can't be a ghost. I don't know. I would have said a definite no a few days ago, but we both heard it. All right, boys, can you join those tests? Nothing. Not even a clue. Let's set up a permanent recording device down there. Leave nothing to chance. Well, you'll have to order in a ton of Ampex. And that tape don't come cheap. We don't cut corners here. Only on the milk. What's this? I'm on the cusp of solving both a spiritual and a technical conundrum, and all you're going to do is slag me off because of the milk. Yeah, we've been here before, boss. It's the small things that knock when we're on overtime for you. You want a nine-to-five, there are plenty of places you can go. Uh, so we're indebted to you for having such a privileged job. I, I get it, boss, I get it. Sorry to interrupt your lover's tiff, gents, but... I've got an idea. What? And? 
As the room tone from the cellar played and recorded again and again. So that's just worn out tape? No, nothing to do with that. It's virgin tape recording every time the room tone is played back. This is pure resonance. So what do we deduce? We need to think like archaeologists here. There are methods we can use to tease out whatever's hidden in the acoustics. Standing wave resonance, Helmholtz theories, but we need Clef to suggest some proper gear for that. Where is he? Upstairs, getting high on a Cornish pasty. Go and get him, would you? Cost you an arm and a leg, all that gear. Jenna. Aren't you running out of ways to butter him up? Well? I'm not paying you to investigate audio anomalies in cellar. Back to research, Jenna. We can't afford another failure, Leo. We have to give him results. Yeah, we've only just started. And you're over budget already. I tried to warn you. It's a nonsense, this whole thing. Nonsense? We all heard it. Yes, but we can't cash in on it. That's the slip of your logic. Not if I catch it on tape. Tape number one. Tascalan cellar, room town, recorded at 0342 hours on the 28th of October, 1979. Four degrees centigrade. Nagra 4D tape recorder and Sennheiser MKH-405 microphone. Quarter speed. We'll go nuts doing this day after day. Or we might discover something. You're not going to catch that scream on tape. I know that. But if we can record a sample of room tone every hour, we can detect if there are any fluctuations in the frequency. And that's enough to at least indicate something. Once more. Is this really necessary? It's called a control, since we're currently working out of thin air. <laughs> you got that? Yeah. Real. Now, let's record again. Didn't you do this already with the room tone? Yeah, but no harm in trying it also with a scream. And what? I don't get it. We work our way backwards. Re-record the scream again and again until it becomes dominated by the resonant frequencies of the cellar. If we can make Jill's scream disappear, Maybe that's our clue into making this other screen reappear. discovered traces of something very different. Another element that's not part of that original stone, but it's been, I would say, fused with it. What element? It could be a transitional metal, but it's like no metallic element I've ever seen. Whatever it is, it is turning this house into a giant recording medium. Crikey, Leo. You need to generate electromagnetism to do that. You need a pretty complex machine to arrange the iron oxide particles in a specific way. Us. We're the complex machine. So, a conduit. Human beings have a magnetic field. In some fluke traumatic event, a person gives off powerful electromagnetism, acting like a machine. And that person then turns the stone wall into a recording medium. The event itself is then recorded in the stone. A stone wall can't record things. We record onto acetate tape. If one object can record, then why can't another? So that poor girl, she's just a recording. Exactly. It felt the same both times I heard it. If it were a ghost, there'd be some variation. It's probably a hundred-year-old recording, or, or however old. That's probably all ghosts ever are. It's no different from hearing a recording of Clement Attlee or, or even Elvis. Nobody gets spooked by the voice of someone deceased when on tape or on the radio. 
It's archived and organised, whereas what we have in that cellar is wild and unknown. But it is the same electromagnetic medium. Time for a ciggy. No, 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 wait. You can't record onto stone or play back from it. If I showed you a piece of vinyl 200 years ago, would you have believed me? If I told you that you could hear a whole orchestra from it? Leo's got a point. We have to keep going. What I have just discovered is a licence to print money. This is bigger than anything we could achieve with sonic drilling. This is a new medium. At least the needle won't get stuck. But what can you fit on there? A few seconds of stuff? It's good for what? A couple of words? It's a gimmick. You don't know how much more audio we could fit on there. Do the measurements. You can't fit that much on a slab. Wouldn't be much good if you had to turn the bloody stone over to listen to side B. We will never get ahead if you always think in current terms. Now, who says that you need a side A and a side B? He's got a point. What if we could fit all your Zappa records on one stone? Don't be a dipstick. Tape number four. Tascalan Cellar, Room Town, recorded at 11.55 hours on the 30th of October, 1979. Four degrees centigrade. Nagra 4D tape recorder and Sennheiser MKH 405 microphone. Stop sniffling! Big question is, can that stone re-record? I mean... What if it's recording us? That is why we should persevere. What if there are even older recordings under that screen? Yeah, but once you've recorded over something... No, not always. Quite often you can hear something rumbling underneath. Play that room tone again.
Hello? Hello? Mum? Mum, it's me. Jill, what happened, my love? We haven't heard from you in days. Sorry, I'm just trying to get on with things and stay busy. Easier not to dwell, don't you think? Well, yes, of course. But we've been worried. I know, I know. I'm sorry. Have you been back for a checkup? Mum, I'd rather not talk about it. What was that? I said I'd rather not talk about it. Jill, it must be the line. You're very faint. When I've finished my work here, can I come home? Of course, we'd love that. Silly at my age. Don't be ridiculous. It'll be wonderful. You beating Dad at Scrabble again. I'd love that, Mum. Is he there? Can I, can I talk to him? You're fading, Mum? sweetheart. Jill? Mum, can I talk to Dad? I've almost lost... I can't hear Mom? you. Mum? You've gone. You've gone. Mum? Why don't you take some leave? You shouldn't stay here. None of us should, but you. You most of all. I want to stay here. Why? Same reason as always. What, that following Leo is exciting? Don't make me sound like a fool. The man's a liability. Maybe that's part of it. I just want to see it through. Whatever it is, it'd mean a lot to see something through until the end. That man has no empathy. And this house is all about empathy. You felt it the moment you walked in. Your trauma. What you've been through. Well, what if it's vibrating with this place? Thousands go through the same thing and they pick themselves up. I'm not going to pity myself and mope around at home. Leo's right in his own way. I have a life, I have a job and I want to move on. But this house won't let you. Anywhere else you'd be fine, but this is dragging you into a place where, where you don't want to be. Only because we're yet to understand it. It's simply a geoacoustic phenomenon, and until we crack it, it's inevitable that it'll play tricks on the mind. Jill, put your scientific wisdom aside for one moment. Your recent loss, this house and that man are not a good mixture. Especially him. Cutting every corner he can and lunging at everything half-cocked. Don't follow a man like that into the dark. Time code on that? 0573. Now play it back. There. 0573. 0573 what? That's our screen point. Hear that? Hear the changes in vibrations? My God. We finally got something. And only with contact mics? Yeah, only with contact mics. All that gear we hired. And then we go and get a result with a couple of mics, no more pricey than a steak and kidney pie. Now what? We do more tests, and you get us some more money from Jenna. Or, preferably, the other way around. in circles with this. What's the point? These are just electrical impulses or vibrations. We can't reduce it to that. Whatever it is, we are not going to leave until we find out what it is. Cleft, give me a bass pulse. Give me a pulse. Oh, sod it. Leo, you do not know how to work that thing. Oh, I'll bloody do it. Get in close up. Longer, Leo. Number 27. Taskeland's cellar room tone recorded at 01.36 hours on 3rd of November 1979. 
3 degrees centigrade. Nagra 4D tape recorder and Sennheiser MKH-405 microphone. Listen. Turn it up. There's something, isn't there? Or is it just psychosomatic? Shh, 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 shh. What did I say about leaving the radio on when we're recording? Don't look at me! We need pure room tone if we're going to detect anything. Bunch of hammer. Number 107. Tuscaland Cellar Room Tone, recorded at 0624 hours on the 20th of November, 1979. Two degrees centigrade, Nagra 4D tape recorder and Sennheiser MKH-405 microphone. Tape number one... Tape number 135, Tascalan Cellar, room tone recorded at 15.31 hours on 24th of November 1979, and I'd like it to be noted that I've bloody well had enough. Me too, boss. Hold your horses, lads. Hold what horses? We're going nowhere. No matter what avenue we go down, what we try to uncover, it always ends with this. It's just ambience. That's the only winner here. The atom wasn't split in a day. I'll leave it out, boss. I'm done in, I'm telling you. Yeah, me too. Maybe they've got a point, Leo. <laughs> what do we really have that proves anything, eh? And now that Jenna's cut the cash flow, we're just treading water. His nibs will change his mind when he comes down. He financed a sonic drilling program. Not this. OK, fine. So he cuts us off? So what? I can remortgage. Oh, you're chasing your own tail again, boss. Lightweights, all of you. Don't throw that one at us. We followed you through thick and thin. This isn't even graspable. Noise and then a scream. Noise and then a scream. All day long, every day. With no evidence to show for it. Yes! All right, and say we get it on tape. Then what? Who wants to play music of a bloody patio slab? I'm happy with my record player, thank you very much. Down sight lighter too. You lot always think too small. Forget the consumer. That's not where the money is. You think surveillance. Hmm? You think global espionage. I could set up a whole house to record in every room. Secret services all over the world will be lining up. I could have them all waiting in line. MI5, CIA, KGB, Mossad. Now he thinks he's Q. Sorry, Leo. You've lost it, mate. I think you'll find intelligence services already have enough micro-recording devices. What sort of mug would buy a house for that? Cynics. A lot of you. Did they say goodbye to you? Of course. Mm. They begged me to come with them. Why didn't you? Good question, Leo. Good question. Let me play you more. No need. No, let me play you. The things Briscoe said to me. It's OK, Leo. I get it. I tried something, you see, Jill. You know me, one of life's tries. Where's Marvy? Waiting for the tech unit to pick up all the gear. So, as I said, history repeating itself. Another aborted project. Look on the bright side. At least no one's helping themselves to your ice cubes anymore. Is that all you can say? To what? Oh, forget it. <laughs> Still a few racks to return, but that's the bulk of it. I think Leo's still in denial. What makes you say that? The Nagra's still recording in the cellar, for one thing. It'll be like looking for a needle in a haystack with all those reels to listen through. Good luck to him. I can't leave him like this. After all he's put you through. Let's not go there again. Jill, I've said all I can say on the subject. Jenna wants all the gear returned today. We have another van coming over in a half hour to pick everything else up. Whether you and Leo decide to stay here beyond that is your business. But Jenna wants everything back. Jill, they'll be here in a few minutes if you want to bring up the Nagra. In a minute, Marv! Oh, 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 God, please. Oh. 
Told you. It was worth one last chance. Besides, like someone here, his nibs has a soft spot for Jill. But even that couldn't swing it. What an imbecile. Some might argue he was an imbecile to get involved in the first place. Jill! Jill! Oh my god. Jill! Christ, what happened? I'm calling an ambulance, Jill. This cut the calm. Jill. Jill, come on. Come on, don't leave me like this. Jill, come on. Jill! God, no, please leave me alone! Oh, oh God, no! God, please, no, leave me alone! Oh, no, no! Leave me God. Jill! I don't know what the hell happened. We wait for the coroner. And he'll say what? She died of a head wound. We know that. But why? How? A fall. What else could it be? But why would she have gone up those stairs? They don't lead anywhere. I've listened to that tape a dozen times and it doesn't make sense. I don't know and it seems like we never will. That's not good enough. I should go. What if the stone recorded her? It's time to walk away from that room and never go back. She meant the world to me. Yeah, well, it's too bad you didn't show it. Help me bury her, Marvie. Leo, the, the body's with the coroner. It's not a body. It's Jill. Help me bury her. We can play her voice back into the cellar and re-record it, just as we did before. I can pay my respects that way. You've lost your mind, Leo. The room tone will bury her. Let's put her to rest, Marvie. I can't do it any other way. I'm no good at funerals. The wife can't see me break down like that. Just, just let me bury her this way. Jenna wants those Nagras and the Revox back. I'll tell him you'll deliver them yourself. Marvie, don't leave me on my own. Remember to bend your knees when you lift up the gear? Goodbye, Dr. Cripps. Screen re-recording. Tape one. 23.47 hours. On November the 29th, 1979. One degree centigrade. Nagra 40 tape recorder. Sennheiser MKH-405 microphone. Recorded between 0900 and 1800 on the 5th and 6th of September 2015 on Sound Devices 702 Portable High Resolution Field Recorder and Sennheiser MKH-418S Condenser Microphone, 18 degrees centigrade. Jill was played by Romola Gary, Leo by Julian Ryan Tutt, Briscoe 
by Julian Barrett, Marvie by Dean Andrews, Cleft by Tom Bennett, Jill's Mother by Jane Asher. The Scream was by Eugenia Caruso. The Stone Tape was written by Matthew Graham and Peter Strickland, based on the original television play by Nigel Neal. It was directed by Peter Strickland and produced by Russell Finch. It was a Something Else production for BBC Radio 4.